Hello everyone, this is the Film Master Alessandro Santagati and in this video I comment uh, again between Magnus Carson against Radoslav Wojtasek. Uh, this game was played in the Shamkir chess tournament in Azerbaijan and it's very interesting because uh, there is a very interesting game by Magnus Carson that uh, won um, his game against Wojtasek and, Wojtasek and uh, uh, it was uh, very interesting because he played um, uh, uh, a sideline of the Sicilian defense. Let's say that. So Carson was white, played d4, c5, knight c3, d6. Usually, when we see this position, uh, white tries to play f4, so for example, the Grand Prix attack, or knight f3 followed by d4, and after cd4, knight d4, so the open Sicilian. The very interesting thing about this game is that Carson played d4 immediately. So the idea about d4 is uh, take on d4 with the queen, and after knight c6, move the queen away. Now the question is where the queen should go. In theory, the queen should go in many squares, d3, d2, d1, e3. It depends by your plan. Here, for example, in the opening theory, is very common queen d3. But if you play queen d3, the idea is move the bishop in this diagonal. So, for example, after knight f6, an idea could be play bishop g5. In this game, Carson played queen d2. Why? Because his idea was play bishop b2, so the fianchetto, and, and control this diagonal. So, for this reason, Carson played queen d2. And after queen d2, black played knight f6, and now b3 e6 and bishop b2. The idea about this development is that white wants to castle queen side and then make an attack against the center or against the king side. So that's the white strategy. a6, castle, b5, f3. f3 is very important because after b5 black threat is pushed b4 and the pawn e4 it's target for black. So after b4 the move to go away, and then e4 is under attack. For this reason, uh, white played uh, f3. In this way, white can defend well his central pawn. h5. Um, I think uh, h5 in this particular position is a, a mistake, because uh, um, I think it's much better for black play bishop e7, and after, for example, king b1, that is a very common defensive move for white, castle, and after g4, try to play an attack on the sorry I mean an attack on the on the queen side and uh, try to defend on the king side but I think it's good for black castle in this kind of position so I think h5 is a, is a mistake because after h5 would be harder for black castle king side because the pawn h Weaken is kingside castle, so it could be a problem. So h5 helps to avoid g4, but at the same time, yeah, problem about king safety. Uh, I don't think h5 is so good because uh, also if black doesn't play h5 and black plays, for example, bishop e7, g4 is not possible because if white plays g4 now, there is a very tactical idea for black knight takes g4, f takes g4, bishop g5, and black can win the queen. So g4. It doesn't work for white immediately. So before to play uh, g4, white is to play king b1, a very important defensive move, and then g4 can be possible. But black can choose also to play h5 now. Also, if I prefer, always play castle king side with the 97, b4, a5, a4, and then the knight can go to b6 or maybe c5. I think that's the main idea for black. Okay, but black played h5 and white played knight h3. Very good move, the idea is to develop the knight that can go in a lot of different squares. Bishop e7 and now knight g5. The knight g5 square is very good for the knight now because it's impossible for black to move this knight away and we see a problem about the move h5. h4. Okay, it's another problem this, maybe black can still castle also if this castle is a little weaker now, maybe can be still possible. But h4 is a problem because this pawn is going alone and I think black has not enough support for this pawn on h4. Oh, sorry. So after that, white played f4. 
Very important. Now, black has problem about king 70, and probably black will keep the king on the center. So if we know that he will keep the king on the center, now it's very important make an attack um, against the king on the center, so attack the center. So this move f4 helps to maybe push e5 or maybe push f5, trying to attack on the center. And now bishop b7. Black complete his development, king b1. Again, king b1 is very important because uh, it's very important to uh, uh, avoid uh, and um, pay attention about this kind of threat in the diagonal. So rook c8 and bishop e2. What complete is development, moving the bishop, queen c7, and now rook e1. Again, Carson is trying to make pressure against this king. Knight h7. And um, yeah, knight h7. I don't think it's a good move this because uh, in general, when you defend uh, is uh, a good idea uh, trade pieces. Uh, but in this specific position, it's not a good idea to trade that knight because this knight on f6 is a is a good defender of the king. So probably it's much better to try to trade the pieces on the queen side, for example, if black has this strategy. But black played knight h7, knight h7, rook h7, and now g4. Um, I think Karsten didn't see a very interesting move for white. White could play knight d5. That's a very interesting solution because the knight is attacking queen and bishop and if queen d8, for example, uh, white can uh, add uh, very strong pressure playing bishop g4 and basically has no moves because if king f8 then we can take here and, um, and it's difficult because then e5 and if d5, f5 and we can immediately open the position, the king is unsafe and white can take a big advantage, there are a lot of different threats in this position. So, this idea of d5 was very good because the idea is, okay, if black doesn't take, take at the right moment the enemy bishop to weaken his position, or if he takes, so let's say if black takes the knight, I think he's forced to take, we take with the pawn back on d5, and then this knight is a problem. The question is where this knight can go, maybe d8, but then bishop g4. Could be an idea, or maybe also simply play bishop d3 to attack the rook and make pressure against the, the file. So after um, after that, maybe black can play rook h5 because the threat was also bishop h7. So rook h5 can be an idea, but then rook takes e7. If king e7 is easy, queen e2 followed by queen h5. And white has a clear advantage because the king is unsafe with equal material in the game. And uh, not equal, maybe yes, white is up a pawn. So also white has a material advantage. If queen e7, we have rook e1 and uh, and after knight e6, take the knight and um, knight f5, yes, maybe it's the only move. g4, we open the position. And okay, even black is up an exchange. White now has clear advantage, so because there are no way to defend well this game. So 95 was a very strong move by from um, for Magnus Carlsen, but he didn't see it. I think so. He played g4. Okay, white is still better, but with 95 probably white could could win easily the game. So g3, bishop f6, and now bishop d3, making pressure against the rook on h7. That must go away. So rook h8, and now g4. Classical strategy, white wants to take space on the king side to make pressure on the king side and also on the center. So knight e4 and now the threat is knight f3. So white played rook e3 to defend it and now king f8. Knight e2. Mm. Yeah, knight yeah, e2, I'm not sure about this move, but g5 I think doesn't work because if g5 there is knight takes b3, there are tactical problems. So yeah, there is tactical problem against this knight. So, yeah, he played knight 2 to avoid that, to remove that knight from the unsafe square on c3. So, knight takes e2, rook takes e2, and then bishop c3. Take, take, queen e3. Uh, this move is very important because uh, in this position, the black king is, um, 
is not in a safe position, so for white it's very important to keep the queen in the game if uh, white wants to make pressure against the enemy king. So queen e3 is very important, don't trade the queens when the enemy king is weak. So rook c5 and then e5. White wants to open the position. Uh, it took, take, and now rook a h1. Uh, this is the um, the final mistake of black. Rook h1 is will lose the game after this move. Uh, black could try to defend playing rook c7, but white is still much better because white can play g5, then white can prepare to push g6, and uh, the king is very very bad, so very difficult for black to defend it. But rook c7. Um, is, is for sure better. With the rook h1, black lose immediately the game because after rook takes h1, bishop h1 and the rook h2, the game is lost because if the bishop go away, something like bishop b7 to do an example, white can play rook h8, king e7, queen g5, and okay, if king d7 there is mate, I think, and queen d6 mate here, yeah, so white is winning. So rook h8. I mean, after rook h2, white is winning. Uh, black tried to play rook e5, but okay, white played check, queen a7, and now after that, uh, black resigns because there is no way to defend this position. If, if king d6, there is checkmate after rook d8, and queen takes a6 and queen d6. If maybe king to f6, for example, there is always. Winning an advantage, okay, white can simply take the, the bishop if he wants, so okay, it's easy, I think. Um, but maybe, yeah, this is winning too, but maybe white can play first g5. And after rook g5 take here, because the idea is that if the rook is there, maybe black can play some checks. In this way there are no checks and white can have a very easy, easy win. Uh, if maybe king g5, okay, there are no problems because after king g5, white can continue the attack playing queen e7, and if maybe king g6, oh no, sorry, king g6, there is a bishop, so maybe f6, queen g7, and the white is going for checkmate, so that's a very easy, easy win for white after after that. So for this reason, after queen e7, white has like perf, uh, resigns the game. Okay, so I think this game was very interesting. Magnus Carlsen won a very interesting game with an um, with, um, uncommon opening. Uh, very, very interesting. If you have questions, feel free to comment below in the video. And uh, thank you again for watching. See you soon for new videos. Bye.